Spacecraft are some of my favorite things of all time to build in this lovely game of blocks. And I realize that I haven't shown very much of my love for them on this channel, aside from a few videos. So I've built a whole bunch of examples, I've actually lost count, and I want to show them to you today in this video. <laughs> it's actually out of render distance there, I have uh, the distance cranked up to 32 chunks. It's very deceiving in a void world, and yeah, it goes on for quite a way, so I imagine this video will be pretty long, so grab your popcorn or, or whatever your designated snack is. Now, those of you subscribed to me might notice that this video has a twin, which was uploaded at the same time. That video is a guide in which I walk through the strategies I used to make the spaceships you will see in this video. <laughs> that's a mouthful. You can watch that video before or after this one, or not at all. That, that's really up to you, and I don't mind whatever you choose. Another thing I want to note before we begin is that these spaceships are in no particular order of favoritism or whatnot. The only reason they're laid out this way is this is the order I built them in. Um, the, the only trend I can see from going to this end to that end is that they get kind of progressively weirder, but that's really just an opinion thing. Anyways, enough of me babbling. I think you want to see me talk about these spaceships now, don't you? Starting off with the only vessel I actually bothered to give a name. Um, I was going to name all of them and then I just kind of forgot. Uh, so this one's got a name, no one else does. Uh, this one's a little bit special, and it's called the Hummingbird, because, well, I thought it looked kind of like a hummingbird with its pointy little nose. My goal for this one was to use kelp blocks as sort of a canopy um, to make it look like it was tinted or something, and it's got that little support that might remind you of something from Star Wars. Um, and I also wanted to make it very sleek and sporty, like a hummingbird might be considered in the animal kingdom. To be honest, I don't know the other animals' opinions on hummingbirds, so I could be completely wrong, but <laughs> that's just a little thing I thought would be fun to share. Uh, you can see I kind of experimented with wing designs. Uh, I kind of prefer without this little flange, but your opinion could be different than mine. This spaceship here, and this one next to it, were my first attempts at making something a little more steampunky. I always love the steampunk genre. It's very cool to me where they use all these fancy inefficient gears and steam and smoke and fire and lots of industrial colors like this rust colored acacia log and i wanted to incorporate that into a spaceship that made it look like it had lots and lots of power which is why the engine sort of area is so big on this one and this one for that matter um and i also wanted to make it look a lot like something from world war ii like a dogfighter would with the proportions and such and it sort of does that i mean the cockpit's in the wrong spot it looks more like a red bull air race plane but i think it still has the same effect this one over here is the same sort of ship except i've just made a special middle cabin area and duplicated the engine section from the, that one twice on the sides and give it sort of a little bit more room maybe this one could be more of a long-range bomber type fighter and that one could be sort of like a close-range escort who knows and here's the view from the back if you're interested. I'll try to show most angles of each of these ships as I go through them, and if I forget any specifically, just let me down in the comments, and I maybe can make a unlisted follow-up video that I can post the link in, where I'm just showing the other aspects of these ships that I may not have shown in this video. This next spaceship is actually based off of something I built in LEGO. I was building some spaceships very micro-scale-like, and I came across one of those little scuba diver helmets, and I stuck some droid arms in and put some uh, joints on the end, and it kind of looked like this, and I thought, hey, that could look pretty cool in Minecraft. So I made it. I'm thinking this sort of has the same sort of application as that fighter over there, as like a dog fighter or something, an escort cruiser. It doesn't really have any weapons, but I figure since it's small, it could maybe be interference more so than attack. Um, again, who knows? This could be interpreted in many ways. That's just the way I thought, and I'm actually quite fond of this design. It's one of my favorites. If you didn't know LEGO could inspire Minecraft, now you know. Oh man, I think this is my favorite view of this little setup of spaceships I have. But I'm getting off topic because we're moving on to our next spaceship, which is another sort of dog fightery spaceship. I made a lot of them to start with. Uh, they'll start to get bigger as we go on over there. Um, but this one... I thought could be a nice little strike fighter. It's again got quite a powerful looking engine, at least I hope it looks powerful, it's sticking out the back. It's quite large in proportion to the rest of the ship. And this one actually has some guns that you can see. Uh, I thought it would be nice to kind of integrate something into the wings and make them a little more shapely, and I think that has the right effect. Uh, my favorite view of this ship is just over here. It makes it look quite intimidating, actually. Um, 
in my opinion. Of course, your opinion could be different, um, but I think that's where this ship is strong. Another goal with this ship was to use this block here um, and make it look cool, and I think it works well with the prismarine, especially how the prismarine changes color. It makes it seem almost organic. You know, I think I'm going to have to record this video over several days because my voice is already dying and I'm hardly in this <laughs> list of spaceships. Anyways, yeah, here's the next one. Uh, it's the obligatory UFO shape. Now, I tried to make it a little bit more unique with this little protrusion here, how these stairs are facing upside down, and it works minimally from maybe this angle, but from every other angle, it's your standard UFO, nothing really much to note about it other than that it's, you know, the color white and gray, and yeah, UFO, ooh, <laughs> there you go. Next up is this weird, silly looking ship. Um, yeah, if you watched my other tutorial video, you'll know that this kind of breaks all the guidelines I set out in there. Um, and yeah, this was me basically just experimenting to see the weirdest thing I could possibly make on a smaller scale. I do make other weird things coming up there, but they are a whole lot larger. The other thing I wanted to do with this one was to kind of experiment with gradients, and it's a little bit hard to tell because of the way it's lit, but this is actually two colors. It's purple terracotta and magenta terracotta, and the slight difference is what I wanted to kind of taper towards the tail. Um, although, looking at it now, I should have added another color, a oh well, um, but I think this works out just fine. And yeah, weird factor, it definitely has a lot of, in my opinion. I guess a giant could maybe sit on this saddle and <laughs> wrangle the ship. Who knows? It's, I mean, you can't even really call this a ship, really. It's a, it's more of a, more of a worm. <laughs> and my voice is completely pooped, so that's the end of day one. <laughs> See you tomorrow, my time, in about two seconds, your time. All right, this next one is one that I am not actually particularly fond of. Um, in fact, it's probably my least favorite out of all of these, and that's because the wings, they don't really work. The shape is kind of weird, it, it it's awkward from some angles, and it, it overall just is kind of eh. But you could have a different opinion if you like it, let me know. My goal with this one was to kind of make a spaceship that I thought could be used for commercial travel, um, which is why it looks kind of like an airliner, at least from terms of the fuselage, uh, not so much the wings. And yeah, so I did that. I had one engine on each side at first, and then I thought it looked kind of weird. So I added another one, and then made this massive wing, and then thought it looked weird and unbalanced. So I added these fuel tanks on the side, and it just kind of spiraled. Um, and it's all right. I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. And I figured it would be important to include nonetheless, because I think it is important to include failures as well as successes. I mean, subjective failures. You, you might not think this is a failure, but I'm pretty confident in saying that I didn't, I didn't succeed at doing a proper u commercial space transport. <laughs> Come on, key in words. On a more positive note, this one I do like very much. It's based on the same engine architecture as that one, except it's enlarged a whole lot. And it's just that, a spaceship attached to an engine, which in my opinion makes it look quite fast, and that's kind of the idea I wanted to go with. This is another strike fighter, uh, similar to something over there, and except a little bit bigger, maybe some more firepower. Uh, perhaps again it could be like an escort maybe to this. So the problem is when you get a little bit further away the signs disappear, um, like that, but that's not too concerning because really we're only examining these up close. Next up is this, and those of you with eyes will notice that it is pretty much an identical fighter or spaceship to this. Um, and yes, that is correct, it is. I just wanted to experiment mostly with the engine layout, uh, which is why I've put them differently here. And yeah, this the only thing to really say about it is I like it a little bit better, and it's probably more applicable for civilian travel because it can fit into a smaller hangar. I mean, this one isn't very efficient in terms of space. It's quite, you know, wide. No, can't fit very many of them in a, in a small room, whereas this one is a little bit more space efficient. All right, next up, this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones, actually, and it was me trying to make something a little bit new, a little bit different. I was tired of doing old fighter jet looking spaceships, so I wanted to make one that was kind of the anti fighter jet, something that was quite you know, doesn't look very aerodynamic at all, and yeah, this is what came out. I also wanted to use uh, purple blocks, and you can see there aren't that many purple blocks. Actually, you can't see any. Um, there are some underneath these trapdoors and in these crevices here. 
But yeah, that was kind of my excuse to go a little bit all out and make this weird spaceship, and this is what came out. Now, it could be used maybe as an observation vessel, or perhaps, I don't know, some kind of probe? Which, I mean, I guess is the same thing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really not sure. I just had a lot of fun building it, and yeah, this big glass dome is definitely unconventional for spaceships. And one more thing to note is I was showing this to a couple friends on the Enigma server, and yeah, they wanted a fireball. <laughs> Continuing along with the theme of abstract spaceships, there's this. What the heck is this? <laughs> yeah, it's not really a spaceship. I was kind of stretching the definition there a little bit. Um, it's more of like a space station or perhaps an alien probe. So I, I suppose you could call it a spaceship. I mean, if it can move under its own power, which we don't know. I could make that up in some sort of lore. Um, yeah, this is actually my favorite this, out of all of these. I'm quite fond of it, especially from afar. When you look at it from back here, it just... Something about it makes it look pretty dang menacing. Um, up close, it's it's all right. I originally was trying to build something like a Borg cube with this design, and ooh, looks like I have a guest. Say hello to my cat. Yeah, you're interrupting me, dear. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, yeah, I was trying to make this into a Borg cube sort of thing, and it eventually evolved into more of a bit of a pokey spire thing. I was trying to use horizontal chains and work with those, because chains are, are great. Let's talk about chains for a second here. They're the only block that you can put vertically like that as like a fence and have it exactly the same horizontal. It's quite useful in that. So you can make something like this. Whereas with fences, you would have to put fence gates here and regular fences here and it would look a little bit off. Um, which is why I appreciate horizontal chains so much. It's, it's such a great addition, I think. One of my favorite new blocks. And this was a big expression in sort of using those to my advantage. And yeah, it turned out to be this rickety thing that I am quite fond of. I could talk about it for ages, man. <laughs> Moving on to this thing, which was built directly after that thing, using the momentum I had from that, uh, is this. It's kind of okay. I mean, I like it. It's not bad. It's not as good as that one. Um, but yeah, it's here anyways. I enjoy it still. I think it could be sort of like a beacon or a lighthouse or perhaps a shield generator of sorts. Uh, my original intention was to make this sort of weird hamburger looking thing with a cockpit on top. Um, but this ended up not looking like a much of a cockpit. It looks more like a light bulb to be honest. So it kind of transformed into this little spool looking thing, which is all right, but not the best. <laughs> Definitely could have gone further with it, but I decided not to given the size and given I wanted to move on to other things like this. This odd looking strawberry, as my friend Wandel on the Enigma SMP server calls it, is my attempt at some sort of interplanetary laser. And it was also my attempt at trying to use this lovely block, which I really like the color of, but the texture just made it kind of weird to work with. But I pushed through that and made this, and I think it works okay. The detail is kind of weird because this is nice and smooth, and then this suddenly is rough, and it just is a little bit clashy, in my opinion. However, I think if you step back a little bit, it works okay. It originally was not a laser sort of thing. It was more of just a ring ship, but the ring turned into this staff, and then, oh, laser time, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good explanation of linear events, Kian. <laughs> Next up is my second attempt at making a Borg cube type spaceship. Um, if you're not aware of much of the Star Trek fan tra fra franchise, franchise, uh, that's that's okay if you're not. You don't have to know everything about pop culture. The Borg are a species in space that basically go around trying to assimilate other species. And they do this by traveling around in several giant cube ships, you know, several hundreds of kilometers across. Uh, so obviously this is definitely a scale model and it doesn't even really look like a Borg spaceship, um, but I just kind of wanted the theme there. Uh, the reason there are no lights on this is because in Star Trek, the Borg ships are usually pretty dark. They do have minimal lighting, but it's green. It also kind of looks like a companion cube, I'll give you that, from uh, Portal 2, I think. Uh, so <laughs> that was unintentional, but I like that aspect of it nonetheless. Moving on, I've got this odd-looking boomerang spaceship here. 
this was sort of my attempt at experimenting with some more complex shapes. And you can see there's still some little rough edges here. It's not perfect. Uh, it just goes to show that these sorts of shapes aren't really my forte. I'm not super experienced in them, but I thought I may as well give myself a challenge and try to construct something using a shape I'm not super familiar with. And this was the result, this gunship thing. And I think it worked out okay in the end. There's still some rough edges, but overall I think it's a pretty solid structure. And it wasn't originally supposed to be a gunship. I actually originally made this sort of as like a space yacht, um, but then these just made it look intimidating like a bird, you know, mid-flight, and then I just added this big gun on the front and it's been a bit of a <laughs> blockade buster, if you will, ever since. <laughs> Moving on to something a little more fantasy-ish, there's this thing, and in building it I had two goals. One goal was to not make a conventional propulsion system. I didn't want this one to have any sort of rockets of any form. The second goal was to use stripped jungle wood. Uh, if you don't know me super well, jungle wood is my nemesis. It is my least favorite texture of wood, and I don't like it very much. So I wanted to challenge myself to use it in some way or another, and this is how it came out. And from up close, you can definitely see the shortfalls that jungle logs have in this sort of application. I mean, they're, they're, they're mossy. <laughs> you don't see much moss on a spaceship unless it's been stuck underwater for quite some time, and this one obviously isn't underwater, it's in space. But from afar, I think it looks okay. Uh, the color is a nice little bronzy metallic -y color, almost steampunk in nature, and if you don't look too closely at it, it definitely looks like some kind of metal. Um, yeah, and the propulsion units I chose for this one, in lieu of making it a rocket-propelled ship or some sort of thruster-propelled ship, were these crystal structures. Continuing on the theme of using wood to construct a spaceship, I've got this odd-looking structure here, which, I mean, in considering real life, is probably one of the more realistic spaceships in this video. I've just placed these end rods there so you can see the whole thing. I know I didn't do too good of a job at lighting this up, but yeah, this is sort of, you know, what you might see in real life give us like 50 years or something. I don't, I don't know. It just seems more realistic given the size of the engines versus the size of the craft and considering what has, what people have used to get to space up until this point, you know, giant rockets and tiny little cabins. So the, you know, propulsion to cabin ratio of this definitely feels more old fashioned compared to these other ships, which makes it seem more realistic, I guess. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, there's a lot to unpack about this ship. I tried to use a few unconventional materials, like this soul soil here, and of course, spruce planks. My idea for this is that you ignore the texture of them and just focus solely on the color, which you can do best by being out here. Besides that, there isn't too much else to talk about this ship, uh, other than this probably took me the longest out of any of them because of the way the engines are structured and I kept having to rebuild them and it was quite a process and I have to say I'm quite proud of the outcome actually. This one is definitely among my favorites. Oh look, it's another triangle shaped spacecraft. Yeah, this one actually turned out to be <laughs> another sort of interceptor type, you know, space fighter jet ship. Um, but it didn't begin like that. I actually tried to st construct another steampunky style spaceship, and it ended up turning into more of some kind of spaceship from the 1960s with this big spherical glass cabin that goes from the bottom to the top and just kind of sits in here. Uh, that's my favorite aspect about this ship, and it's definitely a redeeming feature. This shape was one of the more complex to construct, believe it or not, and it took me a few iterations, but we eventually got there, and I'm pretty happy with the result. Again, this one is another sort of, like I said, interceptor kind of spaceship, which is why the engine is so big compared to the rest of the ship, and yeah, I tried to make it look maybe like it had some kind of other type of propulsion in the back, that could maybe be substituted for the main engine. Perhaps the main engine is used for going light speed, and then these engines are like in Star Trek, the impulse engines that move it around at lower than light speeds. But who knows? That's really all up to interpretation. Another thing I want to point out before I move on is that I tried to use flower pots to decorate one of these. That was kind of the challenge for this, and I thought they would look pretty cool in a steampunk setting. But then the spaceship ended up not being super steampunk, but I think they still fit nonetheless. 
<laughs> there they are here. Moving back further into the land of abstract, there's this thing. And I've given myself night vision just so it's easier to see the smaller details in this ship. I didn't light it up too much. I wanted the cabin light to be sort of a big overwhelming feature of it, so I didn't light too much elsewhere. Um, but I want to show you the detail in most, mostly with these vines and acacia fences and bamboo and jungle leaves up at the top. The only reason I made them this way is because I wanted a spaceship with greenery. And you can't place bamboo upside down, and I wasn't going to do any world edit tricks to <laughs> to make it placed upside down. That's too much work for me. Don't feel like doing it. So I made the bottom red themed with the acacia fences. And I'm pretty happy with this. It's definitely one of the weirder ships I've made. Um, <laughs> it could be in the vein of something similar to the ship of the imagination in Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos series, where it's just this abstract you know, vessel that really has no scientific reason behind it. I mean, with that one, it has a engine, right? It can go forward, backwards, it looks like a fighter jet. This one is just some weird moving observatory, and I like that. That's pretty cool. And here I've cleared the effects of night vision so you can see kind of what it looks like without it. I like it a lot in the dark. I think the lighting is nice on it. I just wanted to make sure everyone could see the details with the video. I know sometimes YouTube videos are a little bit hard to see uh, when things are dark. Uh, another thing to note is this is actually the only spaceship I did a full interior on. The rest of them are just kind of let loose or don't have enough space for an interior like that one. Uh, but this one I thought since it's such a huge part of the ship I may as well include it. Oh dear, my voice is going. <laughs> Come on, Kian, you could do it. There's two more. Um, yeah, so continuing our adventures in the land of the abstract, there's this thing. Um, from the very beginning, I wanted to build a squid in space, um, <laughs> and I finally caved in and, and did this. Uh, this was my ultimate steampunk expression, since, you know, I wasn't very satisfied with that in the steampunk genre. I thought I'd try again with my squid idea, and I made this. Uh, there's a lot to unpack, so let's start at the back and move our way towards the front. Uh, starting with these struts here. Now, this being a steampunk ship, I wanted to make it look as rickety and structurally weird as possible. And part of that is making things look kind of like scaffolding, <laughs> at least in my opinion, which is where these orange acacia struts come in. Now, like I talked about with chains earlier, I could have used them, and they would have been a lot more consistent. However, there are no red or orange chains, and I haven't really featured that color in this build other anywhere else, so I didn't feel like they would have fit, so I just caved it and used acacia, which I like. This section up here, you might notice I've also used stripped jungle wood again, even though I hate it, and I do. Um, but it's so dark here that you can't really notice the greenish tinge it has. Same sort of thing with the edges of these tentacle things over here. Except, of course, right here they're a little bit lit up, but then again, far away, you don't really notice the green tinge. And it's the perfect kind of coppery brass color that comes with steampunk, which I like very much. Now, on the very tip, this spaceship was originally going to have a cockpit. It was going to have an interior similar to that one. Um, I thought, given how big this space was, it deserved one, um, but then I realized, no, it will look better if I give it a brain. So, <laughs> I gave it a brain. A uh, brain of magma, but a brain nonetheless, and yeah. <laughs> and then to complete it all, I gave it little eyes, because mm, I thought they were cute. And you know what? We're having so much fun in the land of the abstract <laughs> that I thought I would end on it and build this little moon-shaped spaceship here. Um, yeah, it, it started out as a moon shape and then kind of evolved into like a Pokemon fish <laughs> shape. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I like it. I'm, I'm not super fond of the way it is. I mean, the whole point of this ship was to make something that used end stone. Uh, that was my little challenge for this particular one. And I thought, you know what? The moon is made of cheese, right? Why not use the cheese block to make the moon, you know, represent it accurately, of course, you know. Real science. <laughs> we, we do science here, right? Uh-huh. And, just like with all its abstract counterparts, there really isn't any super obvious means of propulsion in this ship. And I like it just like that. It makes you think, you know? How else could this ship move if it isn't propelled by any sort of thruster or rocket? Now, you could think that maybe there are these thrusters here, these end rods, 
Or, you know, you could think, no, those aren't thrusters. It's actually going to swim somehow in space. And I like that sort of interpretation. You know, it, it leaves it more up to the viewer. <laughs> what do they think it might be? As for the purpose of this ship, I really don't know. I don't know. It could be a fighter. <laughs> Maybe these are guns. Maybe they're just features. Who knows? And that kind of is a nice overwhelming theme for this video. It's really down to who you ask what these ships could be used for. Now, obviously, there are some suggestions that are heavily implied with the design, like with the jet fighter-shaped starships. However, at the end of the day, it is all up to your own interpretation. And <laughs> there we go. That is all of them. My voice is exhausted. Outro time. Thank you very much for watching all the way through. <laughs> that was quite a video. It's the longest I've ever recorded in one session, or two or three. This actually took several. If you did enjoy and you want to see more spaceships like this, then go ahead and subscribe. No one's stopping you. You don't have to, but I do recommend it if you like what you saw. I have a few more mega spaceships planned. Uh, I've got one in the works right now, which I think will be pretty interesting. I also hope that these spaceships inspire you to try and build your own original creations. If you are inspired, but you are confused about where to begin, I recommend you watch the tutorial video that goes along with this video that I talked about at the beginning of this video, <laughs> or any other tutorials on YouTube. There are tons of spaceship tutorials and guides out there, and I encourage you to go full out and check them all out. and take away what you find helpful and discard what you don't. Everyone builds differently and you are no exception. So if you want to build your own spaceships, definitely do some exploring. Anyways, that's all from me. I'll be off exploring the galaxy in my convertible spaceship now. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure to leave them in the comments section and have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. <laughs>